Hey guys, we are down in the pantry again, and today we're going to do a pantry tour after all of the pantry challenge is over and see just how we did, how it's holding up. As you know, our pantry needs to make it till June because our growing season doesn't even start till June, never mind actually replenishing all the stock that you see behind me. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, show you what we've used, and kind of go over what our plans are. So once again, we're going to start up with our jams and jellies. This is something that I'm glad we still have a lot of fruit in the freezer because I do need to replenish some of these, certainly going quicker than usual with our yogurt making. Uh, we don't eat bread, so we don't do it with peanut butter and jelly, but we're still using quite a bit of it. The one that is disappearing quite quickly is the raspberry jam. I made like, I wanna say it was 22 jars of raspberry jam. And I think we're down to eight. So that's definitely a priority. And luckily I've got a couple bags of raspberries in the freezer from harvesting last year. The other one is strawberry rhubarb jam down at the end. It's another one that's starting to run low and it's a real favorite. My rhubarb hasn't done amazing, but I do have some in the freezer from our old place. So it's like five years old. So it needs to be used anyway. So we're going to make some strawberry rhubarb jam for sure. Other than that, I really don't know. You saw those spruce tips that we had in the freezer when we were doing the freezer challenge. So here's a wonderful little tidbit that was buried down at the bottom that I'd forgotten all about. And we're almost to the next season for harvesting these. These are our spruce tips. Now I had set them aside to be able to make some spruce tip jelly, which obviously I haven't gotten to yet. Those have to get used up and made into spruce tip jelly. Although <laughs> I do still have four jars up here on the shelf but I do want to get those spruce tips used up. And then this year we're going to try and make spruce tip syrup. I will let you in on a little tip. I did try and make spruce tip syrup last year and I forgot all about it in the dark place and it molded and was awful. So hopefully we won't waste all that brown sugar and spruce tips this year. So another thing that I want to touch on here that was up on the top shelf and also behind me here is our fruit sauces and syrup. Again, this is another thing we tried producing last year and weren't sure how much of it we were going to actually use. And I've already taken everything I had in those extra boxes from the bottom and I put it to the top. I know that Jenga song, it's going through your head again, isn't it? It always does. Every time I bought from the... Anyway, so syrups is going to be another big thing for 2024. We're certainly going to be making a lot more of the syrups and the sauces because again, they work great in our yogurt, but they also work amazing with a soda stream. We got a soda stream for Christmas and we use a little bit of our own homemade fruit syrup in with the, the carbonated water. Mm, it's so good. So really next on the shelf, we have our yellow tomato sauce. This is almost like a plum sauce. It was a big hit, but we found we really haven't used it much. So not sure like it but i'm not sure it'll be remade our uh, pickled or marinated roasted red peppers awesome love these on burgers everything and as you can see i've already taken the stuff from the bottom and put it up top here so we are down to seven jars but they are big jars so this will last us but we're really going hard on the peppers i think we've got like 60 peppers started for uh, this season because i want to be replenishing these beans beans and more beans beans are a huge hit around here and we use them a lot especially now that i'm canning them up so the one thing i'm finding with the canned beans is the lids they uh they're they're rusting out right away and i will admit i bought some cheaper amazon lids and maybe i shouldn't have done that but not reusable at all and i'm finding that i'm canning beans and then i'm using them like two weeks later so it really makes no sense so we're trying to shy away from using our canned beans and going a little bit more the old-fashioned where you have to plan ahead and soak those beans before we use them so these ones have actually lasted pretty good this time after we kind of blasted through the first round so hopefully there is nine jars left up there so hopefully they'll hold for the season and we can keep using the uh, dry beans soaked method rather than canned rounding out this shelf you got tomato cocktail which we won't talk about because we're never making that again pizza sauce big hit and hot sauce homemade hot sauce is something that we love but we do have some rules around here for growing peppers and if you want to learn more about that you can go check out hickory croft farm channel but basically we only really grow one type of pepper and then a decorative hot pepper so i don't get enough really to make cans and cans of hot sauce so i've got to kind of come up with a plan this year of whether i'm going to purchase at a farmer's market or something like that some uh, jalapenos and uh, hot peppers hot banana peppers that sort of thing because they were really really good fermented and canned and it was wonderful but i'm starting to run out of that sauce so that's something to stay watching for and see how we deal with this problem 
quickly running through this shelf, James basil stew, pasta sauce, enchilada sauce. All these are stuff that we really haven't used a lot of because we haven't eaten pasta. We haven't had a whole lot of enchiladas. And I don't know why, because we really enjoy it. But I think that's something I need to think about when I'm planning my menus for the next little while is maybe making some of those items. Again, with the beans, which we use a lot of. Charred salsa. This is on my go-to canning list all the time peppers and tomatoes grilled on the barbecue. It is amazing. I will share that recipe this year when we get to that season. And the August stew. August stew is a big hit. I made 58 jars and I think I'm down to, give me one second through the magic of camera, you're gonna see it in less than that, 24 jars. That's what I got left. So we're halfway through and we're probably halfway through the season before we're in next August again and can make this again. But lucky for me, I froze just about everything that we need for it. So I am gonna still stock it up again. So the chicken, slash rabbit a la king is a big hit and we're down to only six jars so we'll probably be making that again lemon basil soup is a staple around here i actually did a video which i'll link above that had this soup with rabbit in it minestrone i will not make again nobody really likes it squash pickles will not be made again they might be becoming chicken food the beets are always a hit and we need to get growing some more beets and really the rest of this shelf is all pickles and relish and all that and i will admit some of it is still from 2016. So I do not need to be growing this sort of stuff. And really the last two shelves are kind of all of our ready meal type things, except for some juice. And they're holding pretty good to be honest. Caribbean goat stew, the ratatouille, some of these are ones that we just don't love and I'm probably not going to bother making them again. But the borscht was amazing canned. And so was the leek and potato soup. Now we don't grow leeks, but luckily my friend Ange does, and so we make this one together quite often. Pea and ham soup is really starting to get low. I've got three jars left, so that is on the agenda. I've got some old pork hocks, which we're gonna pull out and uh, get made up out of the freezer. Then on the bottom here, we have our lemon basil soup that has the rabbit, which again is starting to get low, and I definitely need to restock that one. Our cranberry juice, which was our first time trying canning cranberry juice, and we still haven't tried it. It's supposed to sit for a couple weeks, and it's now sat for a couple months, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be tasty. We just haven't got around to opening one. My uh, Italian-style tomatoes, these are great to have later in the year when I'm trying to get other things used up out of the freezer. For example, when I make this August stew shortly, I'm going to need to use those Italian-style tomatoes because I don't have fresh tomatoes. So they're going to work perfect for that, and they will disappear pretty quick. Then we've got chili and some more rabbit stew. And then we get into a box of tomato paste, which I don't have space to restock where I keep the tomato paste yet because I did do quite a bit. And otherwise, our bottom is still basically tomato juice. We've got a few things here of our uh, chili meat, which I could probably move up top because my chili meat is getting low. Chili meat, I am so surprised. This was my first year really canning just meat. And it's amazing how much we use it, whether it's for nachos or on taco salad or anything like that. I just can go and grab one of those chili meats. It works perfect. Sometimes I grab one of the mixed beans if I'm in a rush. And it really does work perfect for just throwing a ready meal together, even though it's not out of one jar. So we're definitely going to keep going with that sort of thing and hopefully saving ourselves some freezer space. I know you've seen all of this before if you've watched any of our pantry tours. We eat a lot of the same stuff and that's why we stock a lot of the same stuff. And as you can see on this top shelf, our butter chicken curry, butter chicken curry, butter curry chicken, butter, we'll just call it butter curry sauce is really holding strong. So is our gel freezy, which is the darker red one. Uh, Apple pie fill, amazing. We actually had apple crisp made with the apple pie fill yesterday or was that the day before? And uh, that's the first apple pie fill we've used since I made them, what, six months ago? <laughs> so anyways, and it was really, really good. It's just something that we forget to use. We use a lot of apple sauce, not so much the apple pie fill. Um, but the next shelf is kind of our sparse shelf. It's our chili sauce, fiesta corn relish, which I never replenished this year. So now I'm down to only two jars. And then we've got our canned cat food meat. We've only got three jars of that. It's just kind of using up any scraps that we have around. But right below it, we have our human grade uh, canned meat, which we've got eight jars left. So I will be canning a bit more of that out of the freezer. Then we're back up here. We've got Thai sauce, apple syrup. We've actually got a couple rows of it in different jars. And then all this marinara. And most of this marinara, to be honest, was from 2022 because we really stopped eating pasta 
and that led to us using a lot less pasta sauce. So since we don't eat a lot of pasta, I still have a lot of garlic pasta sauce. And this is again from 2022. So we've got to start using some of this up and I'm certainly going to downsize again this year how much of this I make. I probably will only do the marinara sauce to be honest because that's a kind of staple that can be used for multiple purposes. All of our condiments here, barbecue sauce, ketchup, again the Thai sauce, things like that are holding really really well and I think we're going to be good to go. I actually have a lot of ketchup still in the box below so I think we might even be able to downsize how much ketchup we make this year, but that's famous last words because I always make way more than we need because I always grow way more than we probably need. The Italian zucchini stew, this is everything I have left now. We've got 15 jars. I had a box of it down at the bottom for restock and I've already moved that up throughout the last couple months. My plain tomato juice is all stocked here. Again, I'm moving it from the bottom, take it from the bottom and you put it on top and uh, that's doing really, really well because you'll see when we show kind of what's left at the bottom compared to what we had at the beginning of 2024 when we started the pantry challenge, we have actually made quite a dent in the overstock. So the applesauce here is something that we've been trying to get through. I made so much applesauce in 2021 and 2022 thinking we were going to eat it like it was going out of fashion. I had boxes and boxes in our overstock and now I'm down to only two boxes in our overstock. And the last shelf on here besides our overstock is my go-to shelf. Everything that you're seeing on here pretty much has actually already been remade in January of 2024. You saw it in some of those videos as we were cleaning out the freezers and canning throughout the pantry challenge. The summer's best soup, the southwest soup, the turkey barley soup because we actually use that turkey from uh, Christmas time and our lamb stew. All of these get used almost every week something out of here gets taken out so as you can see it's already running low again and it is time to remake a bunch more all right so here you're kind of looking at our sort of ready meal type overstock these are the two boxes of applesauce that i said i had left and it actually has two containers of ketchup in there so it's not even two full boxes which is awesome considering i went crazy and did like 140 jars of applesauce this one here is more pizza sauce with some ketchup here we've got more beans, a lot more ketchup. Oh, and look at there's a couple jars of cherry syrup. The cherry syrup is one that we didn't love as much, so that's why it's still sticking around. And this one, I've already started kind of mixing and matching. I've got some charred salsa and Italian zucchini stew. And then this one, oh, look at that. This one is actually our lemon basil rabbit soup i didn't realize i had a bunch more of this left which is awesome because i'm going to take this one out because there was a big gap on the shelf which i'll show you right now and uh, this will restock that up and also make my overstock look less full which makes me happy because that means we're going through all the wonderful stuff that we've been producing and this one we've got more tomato cocktail more butter chicken and uh or butter curry whatever you want to call it and some chicken broth oh this is awesome this one's got some Polly's Moroccan stew. I didn't realize I had more jars of that. So that can also be restocked. This is so great doing these pantry tour videos because I learn what I'm missing out on. And then this is our 2023 tomato juice that we made, which I'm still using up 2022. So that's going to stay right there. So an interesting little tidbit as we're down here kind of going through the pantry. I actually recorded all the cans that I took out of the pantry this year so far because with the pantry challenge I thought it'd be kind of neat to have a better idea of just what we were consuming and in total we've used 144 jars out of this section of our pantry and also our apple juice and lamb broth which I'll kind of splice in here too um, but that is not too bad considering I canned about 650 jars last year. So all in all, in two and a half months, I've used 144. So I didn't actually think ahead and work that all out to see if we were going to make it for the full year before we got to the end of, uh, you know, canning season again next year. But hopefully, for the most part, what we have on here will hold. And I think we're really going to blitz out some of that stuff that we're just not eating. It'll become chicken food or something like that because those jars could be put to better use. Kind of last but not least on our home produced pantry tour, things that we grew or uh, canned ourselves is our squash and our potatoes. I'm going to talk about the squash first. 
you can see here they are holding pretty good we are starting to see some deterioration you can see those brown marks starting another one's got the end starting to go so we do need to get these squash at least used up quick these ones here the kershaw squash we find they keep amazing so they'll still keep holding strong but we do need to start kind of considering using these ones up a little bit quicker. The one thing that's holding amazing this year is our potatoes and we're actually using them where in past years they've just gone leggy and we haven't used them and they ended up feeding chickens. So this year I've been on the ball, I've been picking those little uh, legs off as they go and they're keeping really really well and we're down to less than three boxes from the seven that we originally had. So hopefully they hold until the summer when we can start eating some of those early new potatoes. And last but not least on this tour is the satisfaction of empty jars. I know I could refill these with water and can them and at least put them back on the shelves, but to be honest, I've got boxes and boxes of empty jars accumulating and this gets me excited for the next canning season. So doing a quick tally as we scan around this area at all the different areas that have empty jars, it looks like there's 13 or 14 dozen complete boxes full and then there's a whole bunch of extras scattered around so i think that accumulates to more than 144 so maybe my math and, and skills at recording what we brought up are a little bit off but all in all we have consumed a lot of what we produced and we are getting ready and stocked up on the items we need to keep going on canning come this uh, season for growing so stay tuned as we kind of get going on some canning here, getting things out of the freezer and hopefully emptying some space so that we can really be ready when things get into full swing in garden season.